Good day, fellow learners. Once again, this is your mentor, your fact check buddy, Ray Gapus, joining you for our next discussion of case number 44. And before we do so, let me first please do join me in this mission. May I invite you, kind hearted spirits out there. Our goal is to provide free NTEX RM application and review to 500 nurses and to help us achieve this, just watch and finish the ads in our videos. And if you share, if you share this video to at least 10 of your friends, we'll pray for your success in your upcoming test. So thank you for doing that in advance. Before we get to start, let's congratulate Paul Christer O. Corpus USRN from St. Louis University in Baguio City for passing the New York Board of Nursing Next Generation NCLEX RN, last May 27, 2025. There is an interesting backstory related to Paul's achievement that is passing NGN at a minimum item of 85. There was a strong earthquake that happened while he was taking the test. In fact, as I've heard from other test takers during the day, they were advised, they were given the opportunity to either continue taking the test and they were asked to hid underneath the computer tables while the timer is still continuously timing the respective tests, which simply means that they were wasting time waiting for the earthquake to stop. And they were given the options either to continue the test after the tremors have stopped or they can have it rescheduled. Well, some of them were brave enough to continue with the test and look what Paul's bravery brought him to. He's now an NCLEX passer at a minimum eight, an, minimum number of items of 85. So he is a certified 85er. But more than that, of course, everyone is expecting Paul to do well because he is a board top notcher. And thank you, Paul, being a board top notcher last year and choosing Ray Gapo system for your NCLEX preparations. We're so honored to have you in the class. So here is here his success story. With 85 questions, my dream of becoming a USRN came true. First of all, I want to thank my family and those people around me who supported me all the way. I felt the pressure because there were so many what ifs running around my mind. For me, I needed to pass because I hold the reputation of being one of the top notches last November 2024 Philippine Nurse Licensure exam. And I would feel bad if I performed poorly on my next exam. Thankfully, passing the NCLEX was made easy by survey system. Thank you for the kind words, Paul. I can't thank Rag RS enough. The lectures were comprehensive. They really broke things down in a way that made everything click. The mentors, super helpful. They weren't just teaching us content. They were guiding us, cheering us on, and making sure we didn't just memorize. We understood. The 10-day face-to-face boot camp was intense. Hello, brain overload, that's true. But honestly, it made all the difference. Every day felt productive and focused and the vibe was so motivating. Plus, the practice questions were so useful, super close to the real thing and helped me build the confidence I needed. And get this, an earthquake happened while I was taking the actual NCLEX. Total chaos, but I stayed calm, kept going. I knew I had this and I knew God was with me. Forever grateful to this review center for helping me turn a nerve wracking experience into a success story. Wouldn't have made it without them. Thank you very much, Paul Christer Corpus, USRN, St. Louis University, Baguio City. I'm sure a lot of people is going to learn, a lot of people will learn from your experience. And let's now move on to our next generation NCLEX RM case number 44. And we're going to talk about hmm, cytotech induced fever. Now, pay particular attention to the fact that cytotech is actually a medication that is used primarily to reduce the amount of acid in the stomach. In other words, it has an anti-ulcer property. So it helps protect the stomach lining. However, it has an unintended or off-label effect of causing uterine contraction. That's why sometimes it's being prescribed for medical abortion and for 
inducing or starting labor. So cytotec is a form of prostaglandin, and you know for a fact that your prostaglandin thins the cervix, it effaces the cervix, okay, and then eventually leading to cervical dilatation. And since it also can potentially cause uterine contraction, it can very well jumpstart labor. So it has the potential to cause abortion, okay? So one of the common side effects of cytotec is actually your cytotec-induced fever, which I know you should focus on. Let's begin with a functional concept. So cytotec-induced fever is a common side effect of misoprostol. Typically, it occurs within a few hours of administration, especially in higher doses or intravaginal use. And the common presenting symptoms would include chills, shivering, and elevated temperature. Usually, the temperature is less than 39 degrees centigrade, okay? And the intervention would just include hydration and the administration of drugs to control the fever. So let's begin. What are the common risk factors? It could occur in PAP, meaning the primary gravida who are young of age and with prostaglandin sensitivity. Remember PAP, primary gravida, age, and prostaglandin sensitivity. Now, since there is a potential for misdiagnosis of cytotec-induced fever and chorioamnionitis, let's differentiate the two. First and foremost, cytotec-induced fever is a non-infectious reaction. It's actually related to the drug misoprostol or cytotec. Your chorioamnionitis is a bacterial infection that affects your amniotic fluid and of course, um, the client's membranes. Now, what's the difference? Okay. Both of these could occur during labor. The difference is cytotec-induced fever occurs one to two hours after administration of cytotec, whereas your chorioamnionitis, the manifestations could occur gradually during prolonged labor or when there's rupture of membranes or ROM. In both conditions, you have fever. The difference is the fever in cytotec-induced fever is usually less than 39 degrees centigrade, Whereas in chorioamnionitis, since this is a bacterial infection, the fever usually persists and may go up above 38 degrees centigrade. So low-grade fever for cytotec-induced fever, high-grade fever for chorioamnionitis. And then we have differing associated symptoms. For cytotec-induced fever, the client, apart from the fever, will have chills, shivering, or as we describe it, as a whole, mild flu-like symptoms. Whereas in chorioamnionitis, the fever would usually come with uterine tenderness, false melon discharge, and of course, maternal and fetal tachycardia. Now, when we check on the laboratory data, usually the white blood cells in cytotec induced fever would be normal, and you will have elevated WBC count, meaning above 10,000 in clients with chorioamnionitis. Another point of difference, the fetal heart rate in cytotec induced fever could be normal, meaning within a range of 120 to 160 per minute. In chorioamnionitis, it could be more than 160. So fetal tachycardia could occur in chorioamnionitis. Now, in terms of the duration of the fever, your cytotec induced fever will resolve in four to six hours, even without antibiotics. Whereas your chorioamnionitis, if antibiotics are not used, then the fever could persist. So the treatment primarily for cytotec induced fever would be antipyretics and hydration, no antibiotics needed. For chorioamnionitis, you need your antibiotics, which are usually administered through intravenous route. Now, what are the common risk factors for cytotec induced fever? Definitely high dose cytotec or prostaglandin sensitivity. For chorioamnionitis, prolonged rupture of membranes, internal monitoring, and multiple vaginal exams. So what's the clinical concern in cytotec-induced fever? It mimics infection. That's why more often than not, um, there is a misdiagnosis of cytotec-induced fever, uh, especially if they're not checking the white blood cell count. Because as we said earlier, cytotec-induced fever may have similar 
manifestations as chorioamnionitis with regard to the temperature. Okay? Although we know for a fact that the fever in cytotech induced fever would be low grade and high grade for chorioamnionitis. And take note, chorioamnionitis is a serious infection that could potentially lead to maternal and neonatal sepsis. So what differentiates the two? First, look at the WBC count. It's elevated in chorioamnionitis. Second, look at the vital signs, specifically the fetal heart rate. And it's usually elevated in chorioamnionitis. And in both of these two parameters, they're both normal for a client with cytotec-induced fever. Okay, so let's move on. The priority for cytotec-induced fever is to assess the client's temperature and to monitor for signs of infection or uterine hyperstimulation. Make sure you differentiate the two while administering antipyretics as prescribed and ensuring adequate hydration. Now, it's also important to differentiate benign prostaglandin-induced reaction from a serious complication like sepsis or chorioamnionitis. Now, sometimes your cytotec-induced fever is labeled as prostaglandin-induced fever or prostaglandin-induced reaction because cytotec is a form of synthetic prostaglandin. Okay, treatment for cytotec-induced fever includes, remember, our acrostic AMDER. AMDER, administer antipyretics such as paracetamol or ibuprofen to reduce fever. Pay particular attention to the fact that your ibuprofen is nephrotoxic, so you may want to check the kidney function test of the patient before administering the drug. And then M, monitor the vial signs, specifically the temperature, because it tends to rule out underlying infection. Not only the temperature, but definitely the fetal heart rate. And then discontinue or adjust the misoprostol dosage if symptoms are severe or prolonged. And then E, ensuring adequate eye dehydration via oral or IV fluids are ruling out infection like chorioamnionitis and endometritis through clinical assessment and if necessary, lab tests such as complete blood count or cultures. And remember this, most cases of cytotec-induced fever are self-limiting and it resolves without further intervention once misoprostol or misoprostol is metabolized, okay? So before we use the functional concepts that we just learned, let me just share with you some very good and inspiring feedback of those who are using my NCLEX 311 book, the Next Generation NCLEX Quick Fix Edition. Okay, a lot of people are saying, parang reflection po talaga, sir, of Quick Fix YouTube and 311 yung questions uh, that I got. So happy I got through the exam successfully. Thank you, sir, ng madami. So then Chin says, blank also came out. I was like, sir, you know what topics would come out? I'm glad I'm a Gapos baby. And sir, sincerely speaking, if it were not for NTEX 11 I would not have passed. I went through it the last four days to the exam. That book is amazing. Keep up the good thing of helping us nurses. And then NTEX 11 the best. Halos same na same po sa pagkakakonstruct sa mga na-encounter ko pong mga standalone questions. It's legit. So thank you so much. And we'd like to remind everyone that the world's oldest NGN passer, that's a record. You can check and ask Chat GPT who holds that record. And it belongs to Ms. Flor Villarreal of Agro Foundation College in Naga City, who passed the test last December to 2024 through the Ray Gapo system, proudly mentoring nurses beyond age gaps and age groups. Okay, so. Let's get down to business. Let's talk about case number 44. Let's read through it. A 27-year-old primary gravida at 39 weeks gestation was admitted for labor and received 600 microgram of misoprostol intravaginally. Two hours after admission, she developed, take note, chills, shivering, and a rising temperature of 38.8. Okay. Her pulse rate increased to 110 bits per minute, but fetal heart rate tones remained reassuring and uterine contractions were regular. I think that should set it apart. When the fetal heart rate is normal, you don't think of it as chorioamnionitis, okay? So the obstetric team assessed for signs of infection, but no false smelling discharge. Uterine tenderness or elevated WBC count was noted. That should rule out chorioamnionitis. So she was given paracetamol, encouraged to hydrate, and the fever resolved spontaneously within six hours. Now the question is, which of the following is the most likely cause of her symptoms? Let's get through it. 
Neuroleptic malignant syndrome is associated with antipsychotics. And we have here a pregnant client who's not taking antipsychotics. So let's rule it out. Although take note, NMS is characterized by high fever, muscle rigidity, diaphoresis, and of course, fluctuation of other vital signs like the client's blood pressure. And then malignant hyperthermia is associated with um, antipsychotics. And this is usually associated with drugs such as quetiapine or serocal. So these drugs aren't named in the case, so we might discard options one and two. And then we're left with cytotech induced fever and chorioamnionitis. What did you say a while back? You would know that it's chorioamnionitis when you have elevated WBC count, fetal tachycardia, and foul smelling discharge, which if you're going to read through the case, no foul smelling discharge or elevated WBC count. Therefore, chances are this is related to your cytotech induced fever. Note that even if the fever is high, it's less than 39 degrees centigrade. So the answer is number three. Okay, I just hope you learned from our discussion today and may I invite you to subscribe or to try our simulation room and our simulation laboratory for NGEN. We're the only ones who have it. Okay, and this is our classroom where we conduct our quick fix on a monthly basis. This is our main hall where we do face-to-face -face classes. Of course, our comfort rooms are so clean. And join our, we're now more than 27,000. In fact, we're now closing into 28,000 subscribers of my YouTube channel. Please do, don't forget to subscribe and hit like, hit the notification button so that you'll get notified as we upload our YouTube videos regularly on a weekly basis. And we have our promo, get a free review from us if you process your NCLEX R application with ITAPS GAPOS. Once again, free review if you process your NCLEX with ITAPS GAPOS. For those who are taking the NLE in November 2025 of this year, avail of our low down payment promo, avail of our Barcada promo. Remember, we now have 316 top notchers and eight number one placers since 1994. And remember, next gen NCLEX application processing with free review, just call ITAPS. 0955-658-5991. And we also have our unlimited next-gen NCLEX comprehensive review at 8,800 with the 85ers. And of course, myself with the latest NGN sample questions and your investment would just take two hours of your time on a daily basis. So once again, this is your mentor, your fact check buddy Ray Gapus at your service. Those who are taking the test, Anytime soon, good luck and God bless. I hope this video will help you out. Give us and share to us your success story once you are done and we'll pray for your success.